Welcome to Behind the Badge. I'm your host, Chief David Malloy, Director of Public Safety for the City of Novi. And I'm very honored to have two distinguished guests here with us today, Detective Sergeant Scott Batens and Crime Analyst Jason Porter. Gentlemen, welcome to Behind the Badge. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Why don't you guys start out by telling us a little bit about uh, your education, your background, and some of the assignments you've held with the organization. Chief, uh, I have an undergraduate degree through Michigan State University and a Bachelor's of Science. Um, during my tenure with Novi, I've been uh, employed here for roughly 13 years and uh, during that time period I attained my master's degree in science and technology through Eastern Michigan University. Um, throughout my 13 years I've been a, a Rope Patrol officer, a detective bureau, I was assigned to the detective bureau as a detective as well as a Rope Patrol sergeant and now I'm a detective sergeant with the city. Outstanding and you know we were talking before we started the show you actually started as an intern when you were finishing up your bachelor degree at Michigan State University, graduated from Novi High so we're really honored to have you on our team someone who was born and raised in Novi. Yes, I am very proud of it. That's great. Thank you. Jason, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. In 2011, I got my bachelor's degree from Central Michigan University. Uh, in 2012, I got my master's degree in criminal justice as well. Um, and uh, I've been with the department for about one year now. And some of the tasks that I do is uh, I analyze the crime um, within the, the city of Novi. So uh, I'm very proud to, to be working here and uh, I look forward to many more years. Yeah, and we're, we're very excited to have you on, on our team. The crime analyst position, as, as you all know, and for the viewing audience, is something that we formed just about a year ago to where we want to take a real surgical, targeted look at where our stuff is happening at, where our incidents are happening at. And, and we'll tell the viewing audience a little bit later on in the show some of the strategies that we're using. Um, but first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about some of the recent crime trends that we're seeing in Novi. Um, yeah, uh, some of the recent crime trends that we've seen um, actually in the past 30 days are uh, a lot of motor vehicle thefts. Uh, within the past 30 days, we've seen seven instances of, uh, of stolen vehicles, uh, which is actually up 75% from this same time frame from last year. So that's something that we're definitely concerned with, and uh, we're looking into it, and we're, we're pushing out the information to the road patrol, uh, making sure that the, the identified areas where these cars are being stolen from are, are heavily patrolled. and. Uh, hoping that we can uh, continue to reduce the amount of, uh, of motor vehicle thefts. And, and one of the things that I think we also, for the viewing audience's own edification, is that we not only track where they're stolen, but we also track where they're recovered from. Correct. And, and many of our vehicles, I believe, are now being recovered in, in northwest Detroit. That's correct, sir. So we're, we're trying to figure out if there's any individuals, parolees, probationers mm -hmm. that might be involved in things like that. And I think for everyone's knowledge, we don't just look at crime data once a month or once a year. This is something that we're studying every single day. That is correct. On an everyday basis, I'm constantly digging through the data that, that we're collecting uh, when it pertains to the crimes and, and identifying these hot spots where not only motor vehicle thefts are occurring, but also crimes like larceny, um, burglaries, things like that that are, that are very pertinent to, uh, to our city. And I know we've had some copper thefts recently from some of our industrial areas. Yes. In uh, December of 2013, we saw uh, a string of of uh, metal scrap and, and copper wiring being stolen from a lot of our industrial businesses along Grand River. Um, and, and like I said before, we, we uh, create this information, we pass it along to the road patrol and we make sure that uh, our police officers are actively uh, involved with patrolling these areas once we know that there is a, a crime pattern occurring. And I believe our uniformed officers and, and one of the uniformed shift sergeants actually apprehended a couple of gentlemen along Grand River west of Novi Road uh, just shortly after they were they were involved in a theft. That is correct. Yep. And they're now facing felony charges. Yes. Outstanding. And, and another new area that we're kind of getting off into is, is predictive policing. Can you explain yeah. to the viewing audience a little bit about mm -hmm. what that entails? Not just looking at the data, but actually trying to predict the day of week, time of day. Yep. So, so like I said before, what I do is I, I like to look at a lot of the data that we collect. And pretty much from the starting point, I, I look at three to four years of data and I try to figure out where our targeted crimes, and when I mean targeted crimes, I mean larcenies, burglaries, motor vehicle thefts, and uh, I try to figure out where they're occurring for a two month span. So for example, uh, our predictive policing that we, that we just uh, initiated was for the months of January and February. And what we do is we look at those two months for four years, and we see where our hotspots are for a targeted crime, let's say it's motor vehicle theft. And what we do from there is we put out a bulletin that says these are the hot spots where these motor vehicle thefts are occurring in the, in the months of January and February. And we identify a time frame and we tell our officers this is where you should be when you've got some time or you're in the area to hopefully either, uh, I guess, 
prevent criminals from, from doing these kind of crimes or catching them in the act. Okay, outstanding. And, and Sergeant Baton's uh, some some crime prevention information. I know that's a key component um, under under your purview. Tell the audience a little bit about what what it is that you manage in terms of being our investigation section commander. As being a detective sergeant, I'm in charge of uh, our surveillance detectives, our narcotics detectives, detectives assigned out to the DEA, the Secret Service our school resource officer, as well as our general service detectives that follow up on all crimes that occur in the city. Yeah, and, and that number, you have about nine or 10 people then total? Yes, yes okay. I do. And, and what are some of the things in, in terms of crime prevention that we can take a look at? Uh, I know uh, fraudulent crime is one of our, our largest growing crimes that we see in, in, in basically identity theft. Absolutely, identity theft is obviously growing rampant across the country with the recent uh, theft of identities through a major retailer that we have in the city. Um, we encourage everyone to be mindful of how they use their credit cards, where they use them, um, if they use Wi-Fi at home to make sure it's password protected, um, if, if they're having checks, writing, writing checks to make sure their social security numbers, their driver's license numbers are not on those checks, and be, be wary of who you release your information to over the phone. If you receive a phone call, um, just be skeptical of who you're providing information to. Absolutely. And, and Jason mentioned some of the car thefts. What can we do to educate the community on on how to keep their car safe. The car thefts we've seen there are, are typically crimes of opportunity, not out of necessity. Um, park in well-lit areas, keep your vehicles locked. If you own a garage, park in that garage. Um, if you have valuables inside your vehicle, uh, store them either in the trunk or more preferably inside your home. Um, just try to mitigate the opportunity to take your vehicle. And, and one of the free services we offer, uh, not only for people who when they're going on vacation, but uh, we, we, can do, we can do a home watch check where we have police officers and volunteers check on people's homes for them. But we also offer another unique service in our home residential security survey. Can we talk a little bit about that? Sure, if you, when you contact our department, uh, you'll be put in touch with an investigator who will set up a mutual convenient time um, to meet with the homeowner at the residence. And it's an exhaustive um, security um, screening of the home to try to target harden it against theft and crime. Uh, it starts typically from the outside in, kind of like a home inspection would, where they'll measure the height of your bushes, um, lighting, is it motion activated, um, do you have an alarm system on the home, is our alarm system turned on? Um, from there they typically go inside the home and they, it gets more technical where they'll address certain things like the strike plate of your front door. Does uh, your deadbolt go in one inch that strike plate? Is that strike plate secured by at least three inch wood screws? Typically builders don't do that, but it's a good way to target harden your home and they'll address everything in the home um, top to bottom. And, and that's not shared with anybody else. We leave that with the homeowner and that's Absolutely. theirs for theirs. It's confidential with the homeowner. Outstanding. Absolutely. And they can, they can get that by going on to calling the department at 248-348-7100 or going on and logging onto our website at cityofnovi.org. Yes. So, outstanding. We're gonna take a quick break on Behind the Badge and we'll be right back. Six stairs takes determination. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. In Michigan, visit knowhowtogomichigan.org. Welcome back to Behind the Badge. I am continued to be joined here by our crime analyst, Jason Porter, and Detective Sergeant Scott Batens, both from the Novi Police Department. Uh, Sergeant, let's talk about some of our year-end crime numbers, uh, 2013 versus 2012. Sure, we had uh, a good reduction in larcenies this current past year. It, uh, we had a 20% reduction, which equated out to roughly 120 less incidences of, of larceny. And that ranges from larceny from uh, a building per se or from a vehicle. And obviously that equates out to roughly about two per week. Um, along the same lines, we had a reduction in vandalism. And vandalism also encapsulates um, the, a keen of a motor vehicle, um, vandalizing Christmas lights that are set out during the winter. And we had a 29% reduction last, last year over the year before with vandalism, which is roughly about 86 less incidents. That's excellent. And overall, our Part A, which our Part A is our most dangerous, uh, we, we saw a nice reduction there as well. Yes, we had a 5% reduction of that, um, which is slightly over 100 cases. And those, like you said, entail all types of major crime, ranging from embezzlement, larceny to assault. Excellent. And then we even go back and took kind of a 10-year snapshot on, on how have we done since 2003 to 2013, and, and what, what were some of those numbers, if you recall? Yeah, very, very proud of this. We've uh, done uh, a lot with Jason's help with uh, timely, accurate information and deploying our resources. Our, our robbery 
is down 26% since 2003. Our burglary is down 51%, and our larceny is down 41% as well. And uh, on top of that as well, which we've talked about, motor vehicle theft um, is down 53%. That's excellent. That's excellent work, and, and it's a tribute to not only the investigative and the analysis that, that you all do, uh, but also for our men and women who are in uniform. Really, truly the background of our organization are our assets that we have on the street patrolling 24-7, not only via traffic enforcement, but also the preventative patrols that they do in an effort to combat crime. Jason, can we talk a little bit about some of the new initiatives that uh, the data-driven approach that we're taking and, and some of the acronyms and some of the meetings that we take place? Sure. Uh, well, one of the, the initiatives that the uh, Novi Police Department has uh, recently implemented is known as DDAX, and that's an acronym that stands for Data-Driven Approaches to Crime and Traffic Safety. And ultimately what this is is a law enforcement operational model that integrates location-based crime and traffic crashes. And what it does is it, it helps establish efficient and effective methods for deploying our, our department resources. And uh, ultimately what, what we're doing is uh, we're taking a lot of the data that I see on an everyday basis when it comes to traffic crashes, crime, citation, arrests, and I'm looking at it on a citywide uh, scale. And I'm trying to identify where our targeted crimes are and where our traffic crashes are. And ultimately, uh, what we want to do is we want to overlap both of them to identify target areas where we're seeing both traffic crashes and crimes. Now, when I first started this, I looked at four years of data to get a good foundation of where we're seeing these over the last four or five years. And ultimately, we, we ended up finding three uh, spots where we wanted to do this DDEX uh, program. And we identified our first zone, which is around the, uh, the Haggerty Corridor in Nine Mile. And we started in September of 2013, so we've been there a little over five months now, um, and we've seen great and promising results since then. A couple stats here um, on our zone. We've seen a uh, overall reduction in our targeted crimes, like I alluded to earlier, when it comes to larceny, uh, burglary, motor vehicle thefts, uh, crimes like that. We've seen a reduction in 65%. Um, with that, inevitably, we're going to see a spike in uh, police contacts. We've seen a, a large increase in police contacts with our citizens in this zone. Um, we're up 452%. Uh, another, uh, another note here is that uh, we've seen uh, a decrease in our, our larcenies from automobiles, uh, 77%. So ultimately what we're doing is we're getting our police officers in this zone, uh, high visible uh, traffic enforcement, getting in, in contact with our citizens uh, so we can, we can weed out our criminals or our suspicious activity that's going on in this zone. But we're also targeting the specific hours of the day, correct? Yes, there is a time frame involved as well. We have identified a time frame between midnight and 6 a.m. for our targeted crimes. We've also identified a, uh, a time frame for our traffic crash between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. So um, we've seen great results so far and we're, we're excited for the next year. That's, that's some excellent work and again, it's, a, it's attributed to this, the, the surgical-like approach that you all are taking and not only sharing the information with the uniform assets, but our commanders who are out on the street who are having the officers in those areas during those yes. times. So 65%, that, that's, that's an outstanding reduction. Mm -hmm. and, and what else do we do in terms of some of our weekly meetings when we're analyzing crime and then, and then we share that out department-wide? Sure. One of the things that, that we do on a weekly basis is called a ComStat meeting. And what ComStat stands for is computer statistics or comparative statistics. And, and, and to refresh uh, a lot of uh, people's memories, this was started back in uh, the 1990s in New York City. And what it is is it's, it's an opportunity for law, law enforcement personnel and, and fire department personnel to get together on a weekly or monthly basis to exchange information on, on what they're doing, to get everybody on the same page. Um, so we're doing this on a, on a weekly basis, and we're talking about things like DDAX. We're talking about uh, crime trends like we've talked about earlier. Um, we're talking about fire and, and police training that we're going through. Uh, we're also talking about officer performance and activity. So these are, these are a lot of topics that we're talking about on a weekly basis. So everyone's on the same page, and, and we, can, um, we can continue to do our job effectively. Excellent, excellent. And those are typically held 2.30 on a Tuesday afternoon, Correct. and mm -hmm. we either do it at the police training facility or the fire training facility. Mm -hmm. Uh, another good component is we take those on the road sometimes too and we we will do them at 9 30 at night and sometimes we do them at five o'clock in the morning so we can we can touch on all aspects of our, our supervisors who are working not only in police fire but also ems and, and moving forward in 2014 any goals or trends that we were looking at i know we're going to look at some other ddac zones certainly uh, that's uh, a major topic uh, for 2014 is is implementing a if not a new ddac zone but uh, another one as well uh, that's something that that i think the novi police department takes seriously and uh, so that's one goal another goal of ours is to continue to reduce our part a crimes 
um, that's on the top of the list, and, uh, and improve our predictive policing strategies like we mentioned earlier, being able to, to do this on an every two month basis, being able to, to uh, send this information down to Rural Patrol. Uh, I think that's uh, an integral part in, in making our 2014 even better than our 13. Excellent. And Sergeant, uh, in your daily duties, you come in every day, you're looking at cases, kind of walk us through what something like that is like. It, uh, when I come in, I'll review all the cases that have been uh, completed by the road patrol either the previous day or the previous night. And I'll read all of them and sign, out, sign them out to specific investigators, um, whether it be our detective that's assigned to our mall district or our secret service detective to follow up on a financial type of crime. And from there, um, they'll check their caseload that morning and uh, they'll start working that case. Typical day, anybody anywhere from two to three new cases per detective? Uh, yes, absolutely. I read anywhere from 20 to 30 cases a day. Excellent, excellent. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate the information that you shared with us today. I know it's probably helped the viewing audience uh, become a little more educated in terms of some of our crime fighting strategies, our investigative tactics that, that the sergeant and uh, our crime analysis uh, unit is doing. And uh, I appreciate you both coming out here, and, and I certainly appreciate everything you do for the city of Novi and the Novi Police Department. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. And to you, the viewing audience, thank you for tuning in to Behind the Badge. Until next time.